The normal process to cut out a clock on your CNC machine is pretty darn simple, but it does include flipping over your material. First and foremost, you would cut out the very center where your clock mechanism would fit into, into a pocket, and then have a through hole where the clock mechanism post can fit through so that you can attach all of your hands. Well, next you would flip over the material and then you would go ahead and cut out numbers, you know, one through 12, and that would be your finished clock. The great thing about clocks is a lot of people just use them as decor and don't even really need them to function as a clock, so you can just not do the mechanism part and just carve on the face. But today we're doing something special. We're gonna be cutting out a clock that functions as a clock without flipping it over. So instead of having numbers carved on the other side, we're gonna be doing through cuts so that you can quickly and easily at a glance look over at the clock and see where the hands are lined up based on the fact that there's no material there. So that'll make more sense in a second. But I really wanted to be able to go at this in the beginner's route because if you've never flipped a part on your CNC machine, that can be incredibly daunting. So first and foremost, this episode is going to be completely dedicated to the no flip clock. And then later in the year, I'm going to be having clocks where we are going to be flipping our part over so that you can start getting used to the fact that yes, you can flip over parts on your CNC machine and there's a lot of things that can go wrong, but it's not really that difficult. But today we're only focusing on the no flip clock. So we're only going to be using one of the three bits that you need to CNC with me, the downtown Jenny. And I'm the first person to go ahead and say that is not the right bit for this. One of the really cool things about this channel is you only need three bits to CNC with me and we're sticking with that. I am not changing the bit, but there are some caveats that we need to go ahead and work through so that we get a really good finished product. I'm gonna be using three quarter inch material for this project. And honestly, I could probably use one inch material, but in order to get a bigger clock and not have to glue things up, plywood's the way to go. And I'm really looking to test out to see how far the pocket needs to be for the clock mechanism to sit. This is my very first time cutting out this project, but I've rendered it a lot of times and I think it's going to work out great. But like I said, we're going to be using our downtown Jenny, which is a down shear quarter inch bit. And the really great part about that is when you're pocketing things out, it leaves the top surface really, really nice. No strands are popping up or anything and it's leaving a very clean top surface. The unfortunate part is if you're cutting all the way through your material, it's still pushing that grain down. So the very bottom of this plywood is going to have some chip out. The way that we're going to be specifically combating that is completely covering the bottom of this plywood with double-sided tape. What that's doing is it's giving a little bit of backer to the piece of wood. If you've ever been at your miter station and you've had a piece of wood and you don't have a zero clearance insert, there's a bigger gap for the blade to be able to fit in for when you're doing miters and all that kind of stuff. Um, your wood might have a little bit of tear out on the back. Now, a way to combat that is to have a secondary or sacrificial piece of wood underneath it. So as the blade is cutting through, it can't push the grain because it's treating both of those pieces of wood as the same piece of material, and then your sacrificial one will have the tear out on the bottom of it. And we're gonna be using the double-sided tape as their sacrificial piece of material. It should work perfectly and I don't think we're gonna have any issues. All of that being said, if you do happen to have a compression bit, that's where the Jenny bit started. It was the very first compression bit specifically meant for hobby CNC machines so that you could get the good of having an up cut and a down cut all in the same package so that you're getting a very nice clean top and bottom on your plywood project. So if you already have a Jenny bit, I would definitely use it for this project. If you do not, you do not need one. Just make sure that you're going through the steps so that properly you're not blowing out the back of that plywood. Because the back of this plywood is going to be the face of the clock and we wanna keep that as clean as possible. So like I said, we're just gonna be using our quarter inch downtown Jenny. We're going to be zeroing that out on the material. It's first and foremost going to go and pocket things out and then it's gonna make a through hole where that clock mechanism post is gonna go in. And then I've set up the file so it's gonna make a profile cut for every single one of the quote unquote letters that we're cutting out and on the back, I am cutting a very, very shallow trough so that however you're going to be hanging this on the wall, you can quickly and easily see what is level so that you're not having to guess around with that. So let's go ahead and cut it out and see what happens. On to this week's mystery file. So if you don't know what a mystery file is, don't worry. It's when Mitz, who makes all of the files for CNC with me, sends me over some mystery G code. I load it on the controller and then we cut it out. He knows what I'm about to cut out. I don't know what we're about to cut out. And he made a very strange request this time. He said, don't use MDF, use something nicer like pine. So that's what we've got. We've got a piece of pine stair tread and we're going to be using just one bit, our 60 degree groovy Jenny. We're going to engrave something and he specifically said, make sure that you go ahead and do some type of a top coat. So I went ahead and put down some lacquer before we're carving. Afterwards, I'm going to spray everything down with some type of colored spray paint, whatever I've got in the shop. We're gonna sand it off and see what it says. All right, so here's a good lesson in optimization. 
this is a V-bit carving. And like I said earlier, what happens is Smith sends me over mystery G code. So I haven't touched these files at all, except for loading them on the controller and pressing play. Now the really cool thing with Masso is it gives you a preview about what you're about to cut. So every once in a while I do take a peek and I see what's about to get cut. And I'm really excited about this because he's taken a picture of my daughter and then added some text around it. We'll show it off in a second. But the issue is right now, if you haven't noticed, the CNC machine is moving very, very slowly. Not only are the feeds and speeds a little bit reserved because that's how we have them on cncwithme.com, but also what you're about to see is every time that it's moving over where it needs to start a new cut, it's retracting very, very high. And after being able to see that, I know that Mitz in his file, for some reason, has his Z safe height a lot higher than what I normally do. If you have a piece of wood and you're starting your cutting here and then you have to move over and cut here, your safe height is how far that bit is going to move up and then over to the next place which is great when you have clamps and stuff like that and you're trying to make sure that you're not hitting anything, but it's not great when you're just trying to optimize your cut. You just saw how long that took. So in order to speed up this process, I simply sent Mitz a text and said, hey, this is gonna take like two hours for a carve that I know should take like seven minutes uh, after looking at that and seeing what we're trying to accomplish. So he sent me over a brand new mystery file, the exact same thing. And the really cool part is I'm not gonna really have to change anything about this program at all. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop it, plug this in, load in the new file. It already knows where our X, Y, and Z zero is. And then we're just gonna start it. It's gonna recut the things that it's already been trying to cut this time, but I'm not gonna sit here for another hour watching this go when I know that this is the file we're gonna use. Let's see what happens. So the file is in and you can already tell a tremendous amount of difference that we've been able to see about how it's just moving to the next space and starting to cut immediately. A very simple thing like that for brand new beginners is, you know, killing your day because you start getting here and you think, why is this thing taking two hours long? But it could be something just as simple as making sure that your Z safety height is set correctly. Uh, for mine, I normally set them at 0.1 or 0.05, especially when I use my double-sided tape and I don't have any types of clamps running around. If you do have clamps all over your thing, you might want to be able to set your Z height a lot higher, but that does add on a lot of time to your carving. But Mitz says, if daddy can't fix it, no one can. Which I really appreciate, Mitz, but that's so far from the truth. There's so many things I can't fix. I hire people to do things all the time. I'm pretty good at making stuff. Fixing stuff? Thanks, Mitz. All right, well, the double-sided tape trick worked uh, pretty well. There are two very tiny places where the bit was doing its job and it was pushing downward, and we did get a little bit of chip out. I went back and rounded over everything with a 3 16th inch round over bit. It is a very tiny micro bit, so even when we're doing profile cuts like this with our quarter inch bit, it still has a bearing small enough where you can fit it in there and go ahead and give everything a nice round over. Now, I haven't done anything else. I haven't touched it up with any type of sanding or anything like that because the main reason that I wanted to go through this project was just to show y'all, hey, we did all of this as one-sided cutting. I brought it over and of course I did a little bit of round overing by hand, but you can do this without flipping over your part. The really nice part is now we've got our little clock mechanisms and we can push those in. That's the second thing that I wanted to talk through today is how far these things are pushing through. I went ahead and ordered three of these from three different manufacturers and although they look almost identical, they're slightly different from each other and each of them have a different post length that is gonna be pushing through the hole depending on the thickness of the material that you have. Now this one right here is by far the shortest post that we have, and it still is poking out a little bit more than I would feel comfortable. Honestly, if we could bring it back just, I don't know, an eighth of an inch, that would be much better than it is right now, and we could make that up with the depth of the hole that we're cutting. Because we did cut this, and it's pretty shallow, and we still have a little bit of room on the outside. This doesn't screw in from the back the way that it attaches to your clock is it's got a nut and it threads on right here and that nut friction holds everything down so that this doesn't move around at all. Now the different types of ways that you're going to be hanging this on the wall you probably want to make sure that this is flush so unfortunately using an inch thick material is going to get you a lot better result. And when I say unfortunately, it's because when you get inch thick material, it starts making things much, much, much more expensive, especially if you're using something in hardwood because 
that really limits the size of the piece of wood that you're using to the planer that you have, unless you're using your CNC machine for everything, which you definitely could. Go ahead and glue up a very large blank and then flatten both sides uh, with a flattening bit and go on from there. But the majority of people are gonna be purchasing wood at their local Home Depot or Lowe's, which means that they're gonna be looking at some type of plywood. I'm pretty darn happy with this, and I do wanna mention that if you wanted to make this extra fancy, as it is right now, this is a pretty cool project that I think that anybody could and should be going for. But if you wanted to sell something like this, let's take a second and dive into that. I would be making a clock that was laminated, so it would be walnut. And then right here, I would inlay some brass strips. So the brass would stick out till about right here, so it looked like sun rays coming in. Walnut and brass looks really great together. A lot of y'all are thinking, well, brass is really expensive, and especially if you're looking to inlay, you're looking at quarter inch thick brass material, and that's gonna run you down a whole road. Specifically for me, what I would be doing is I would go ahead and cut out some mock strips on the CNC machine, just out of some trash material that would make up those, and then I would put them all down, pour silicone over, and use those silicone molds to pour in epoxy and brass together to give that same look while making everything a lot more affordable so that the end consumer isn't paying $4,000 for a clock and you can get them closer to like 400 bucks for a clock and you start offering something that no one else is. Now the reason that I say that stuff publicly and not just on cncwithme.com is I know the majority of people are not going to go to all that effort to be able to create that specific product when in reality most people are going to stick to this and bring it to craft shows, craft fairs, and if I were doing that I would definitely stick with a plywood type material, something that you can make very fast, very efficient, and more importantly cost effective because your material cost is going to be be super low. This took less than six minutes to cut out and it's not a bother at all. And the really nice part is for you CNC with me members, you can jump on and watch the toolpath tutorial where I'm going to be talking about scaling this because these pieces are profile cuts. So you certainly could make this as big or as small as you wanted to. And it's going to scale having these exact same dimensions while still accepting these types of clocks in the back all with just cutting everything on one side. Now, speaking of CNC with me, right now you see all the members streaming by. We have a ton of people. We're almost to 700 members, which is absolutely nuts. And lately we've been doing a bunch of live streams. We've got help desk. It has been a ton of fun over there with people sharing their different projects, what they're working on, problems that might be happening. And the community is just showing up and really helping each other out. So if you're a CNC with me member, I really do appreciate it. And if you're somebody who's considering joining, go ahead and check it out, cncwithme.com. So I went ahead and bought three different of these clock mechanism uh, things. We've got these different post sizes, and more importantly, it comes with the different hands too. So you can see I'm using three different manufacturers. They're all fitting in this hole. It comes with three of these things. There's a rubber washer that goes on the unit before the unit goes into the pocket. And then there's a brass washer, and then a brass nut. Oh, that's great. I will put this one listed as first in the clock parts because I like this one the best as far as how it fits in because this fits in great with three quarter inch material, although it does still pop off the back a little bit. There's that. Okay, now let's see if we can just get the walnut ones on there. I'm gonna go with these. Oh darn, doesn't that look good? Now, as you can see right now, obviously I haven't sanded this at all. I've done very little prep work other than the round over, but it is looking great. There's a lot of different ways that you can finish plywood as far as the different stains that you can use or especially paint just to make things look all exactly the same. But I really like the way that this is looking with those dials. So I'll go ahead and link all of that down in the description. I'll make sure to put this specific one that with three quarter inch material, the post is going to be like super snug and it's not going to be obtrusive or it's not going to pop out very far. Um, and then I'll make sure to post the one that has all of these little walnut pieces because those are great. There's even one here that looks like a little branch. Pretty cool. Yeah. Infinitely scalable. If you want to make this thing 42 inches big, you definitely could. If you want to make this thing four inches big, you definitely could. I don't know. Uh, I think this pocket's like three inches. Maybe you would need to make it like at very least like six inches. <laughs> as far as clocks are concerned, let me down down in the comments below if you feel like clocks definitely should be flipped over and you should definitely pay more attention to the face. Or if an idea like this where you're just milling one side and then getting a two-sided clock is something that you would consider doing. Thanks for stopping by the shop. And remember, we don't have to see and see alone. See and see with me. Bye.